Praise God. Again, how's everybody this great and wonderful morning? Amen. You know what? You said the right words. You know, a lot of people, when I speak to them, especially in the Cypress House, they forget who they are. I say, how you doing? I'm okay. I look at them like, aren't you from the same place I'm from? We don't go by how we feel. We go by what we know. I'm blessed. Forget about my, my toes almost falling off my, my leg. And I'm blessed. Forget about my problems that's going on. I'm blessed and highly favored. That's who I am. That's who I became to be. I'm not that person that I was yesterday, but I'm going further today. You know, in this walk, the longer you're in this walk, the more you find out how much you don't know. The more you're in this walk, you find out how much vulnerable you really are. Because every day you get closer to God, the more you find out how more he is and how more less you are without him. Because this is a long journey. This does not take a 100-yard dash and you're done. This is a lifelong journey. And it takes day after day, success and failures, to get through this life. Because this life is not just going to just lay down just because you changed. You have to show the world that you changed so they can fall down to him. So they can see him, not you. Because as long as you're in the way, they can't see him. That's what we're going to speak today about contaminated tongues. Our tongues get in the way many days. We speak things that ought not to be, even myself. And I have to catch myself sometimes. And I watch um, Pastor. Sometimes he'll say something and he'll stop. I say, come on, Pastor, say what you got to say. Mm -mm. I'm not saying it. Because he knows the value of words. And, you know, he's not perfect. He'll mess up too. But he knows the, he understands the value of what to say and what not to say. Because he knows it, it causes a ripple effect. And it will create issues. Maybe not today, but sometime down in the road in our lives. Amen? Now, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew it means defile. A contamination is, means defile. That means you can defile your temple by what the words you speak. Even if you cut somebody out, you might feel good for that moment. But you got to understand something. The words that you speak out comes back into your ears. When it comes back into your ears, it hardens your heart. And if, unless you repent and turn that stone around, it'll stay there. And next thing you know, the word of God will speak to you and you won't be able to hear it because the hardness that has created is in you. Um, and now defile means to make unclean and impure. That's what it does. It makes you unclean now. Instead of being holy and pure, it takes away and takes away the pure and makes you unclean. And to corrupt the purity of the perfection that Christ is trying to put into you. Yeah, this little thing right here. And the word says the most ruly thing on the, on the body. It can send you to hell easily. And, you know, we can walk hell on earth. You know that, right? Right in our soul. Because that's our mind, will, and emotions. A lot of us, man, when y'all first came in here, you could smell hell coming right out you. Right off of you. Because <laughs> you were coming right off the streets. You know, coming broken, burdened, and everything. Got beat up and everything. And, yeah, you fresh from the world. Because the world is going to hell. You know that, right? And a lot of people... That's come the narrow, we have to choose the narrow path. Because a lot of people are taking their easy way out. And they don't know that easy way out is the wrong exit. Amen? Let's move forward. Let's go to Romans 10.
So don't leave out of here today and allow that tongue to rule your body in the wrong way. And don't think that what we speak on this, on this pulpit does not come and come around. These words does come around. And it can affect your life. How many of y'all that was in the world, you have to put your hands up, had a, a, a perverse tongue when you was in the world? Don't put your hand up. <laughs> and what good did it bring to you? What good did it bring to you by having that perverse tongue? It brought harm. Matter of fact, your tongue can bring sickness. You know, the word says that a merry heart brings, is like medicine, you know? And if, if you have a merry heart, you've got to understand your heart's connected to your tongue. So whatever you speak out your tongue is hovering right here in your heart. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm just joking. Yeah, are you really? Because, you know, the word says this, we ain't supposed to be coarse jesting. So that means then the enemy knows these things. And he'll use those little, the little leaven. He'll use that little leaven just to curse you off of coarse jesting. So we have to be careful. Even when you cross jest, you got to be mindful. I mean, even when you're having fun, you got to be mindful of the words that you say that is it going to bring harm or is it going to help? Because you could bring harm to someone and don't even know that they're in that place where the devil is messing with them and you spoke something to them and brought damage to them and he had it all set up for that time to do it. Amen? Romans 10, we there? Verse 5. For Moses write about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks to in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. See, the mouth and the heart is connected. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So your heart has to, to believe. It has to believe. That everything starts, everything that we started to get saved and get, and get in right position with Christ was through confession. We had to confess with our mouth that we believe that he's the Christ. And which manifests, and that what, what it manifests is the blood. Now the blood comes forth to cover you. Because with the heart, you believe. With the mouth, you confess. Now you have access to the blood. Now you could speak with your mouth and your heart didn't believe. The blood will not come. Because God sees the heart. If you really have true confession, he knows and he can see. Amen? And really, their heart's not in it. Yeah, I'll be there uh, around 10 o'clock. <laughs> you wait 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. <laughs> and they, they spoke it, but really in their heart, they wasn't coming. <laughs> Anybody ever had those situations? Oh, y'all haven't lived long enough then, huh? Okay. <laughs> if you didn't, it's coming. <laughs> How many times you spoke something and you didn't believe it? As you're speaking it. I'm, I could look in the world how many times I told people, yeah, I'll be back with your dope. I knew I wasn't coming back. <laughs> I knew I was lying. But I spoke it in my mouth. But my heart wasn't there. How many times you spoke to yourself and said you were going to do something? 
really, you thought you was going to do it, but your heart, you still had a place in your heart that you knew that you, you left a, place, a piece there that the devil could still have. So you doubted what you really were saying about your own self. I'll never do it again. How many times we said that? I'll never do it again. And we'd end up doing it again anyhow. Because we wasn't really true to ourselves. Amen? Everybody okay? Y'all looking at me like I got a third eye somewhere. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm not pastor. I'm David. I'm sorry you don't have pastor today. You have to deal with me. Amen? So take the word of God that's come through me and receive. It might do some change into your lives. Because we all, we all are ministers of the Spirit, aren't we? Amen? 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ has come and to the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. There's a lot of Antichrists in the world. This is talking about the main Antichrist that's coming, but there's a lot of Antichrists there's a lot of pastors that are out there teaching the Word of God, but they're not connected to the Word. So you've got to have discernment in knowing who is speaking to you. Amen? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who's in you is greater than he's in the world. How many times, anybody ever said that? He's in me is greater than he's in the world? I, I'm going to tell you a little story real quick. I'm going to tell it myself. I like that. I remember one time I was working, and I was dealing with uh, this female at my job, and this was when I was in the program. And she looked good, you know, and I was struggling. Lord, help me, help me, help me. So he said, why don't you speak my word? So I kept on saying, every time she passed by, great is he to me, then he is in the world. Great is he to me constantly. Over and over, just because it didn't work the first time, I constantly spoke it because it was the word. You have to break the wall down. One day, she passed by, and, and the Lord showed me her spirit come out of her like this. And it was an ugly spirit. Then it came back down, and it never looked the same. It never looked the same. When I see it, I'm like, Ugh. I'm telling you something by experience, nothing that somebody taught me, but the experience that has, the Lord has showed me through things that I've been through, I know that the word works. You have to just believe what it says. Even if you don't see, you still have to speak it because it's a truth word and it will show you. And if you don't, and if you don't, uh, can't see it right now, that don't mean that he has a plan for later. Because sometimes God holds back stuff for the divine timing. Amen? There are the word, now verse 5. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Have you ever spoken to somebody that don't understand the spiritual things of God? And they look at you like you're foolish? Because they do not understand because the words that they speak are not of kingdom words. So they believe in the, 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 they believe in the carnal way of thinking. Because their minds are of this earth. They're not based on kingdom principles. And even when you talk to a baby in Christ, you have to feed it and nurture it slowly until it can come to the place of understanding. Because even though you tell them that thing, don't mean that they will follow it in the beginning. It takes practice. 
so that you come to the place of perfection. So it takes, well, it takes for us that do understand patience. That's a word that a lot of people have trouble with. I want it now! Maybe you can't handle it now. So God knows what's best for you. So you take it as he gives it. And when he gives you the revelation that overflows you, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes he throws stuff into you and you, it, it overwhelms you. It's so much. Oh, Lord, that's so much. I can't remember it all. But he says, I'll give it to you in the time that you need it. Amen? Confessions activates the blood. And the blood activates to place of repentance. Now you come to the place of repentance. Because now the blood is there because you repented of the sin. Now you have access to the Spirit. Amen? We're taught this, right? The sword cuts which the Spirit and severs the sin. So now as you come to repentance, now the sword of the Spirit comes and takes away, cuts the sin away. So now you're free from your old nature. Amen? Don't believe every spirit that you hear. Test all things if this is really Christ. You have to be patient. You have to wait in the Lord. Just don't go by what you hear and just take off. Because you might be in error. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit, I mean, the devil likes to imitate the Holy Spirit. And he could sound just like you and thinking that is the Christ voice. So you have to wait. And sometimes you have to ask the Lord, can you bring me confirmation, Lord? And when you get the confirmation, can you bring me another one, Lord? And you get that one, Lord, can you give me another one? Until he comes in his head and says, come on now, I told you, now come on. Now he'll, he'll cause things to happen so that you move forward if you're behind him. Amen? Because he loves you. Never let the devil hold your words. Because a root will grow. When you do things out of God's timing, it will lead to sin. Amen? What you confess, you will possess. So be careful what you confess. Because you might be carrying it. And then you'll be carrying the weight all over again. And you'll be heavy down and burdened. Amen? James 4.1 Where it says, where, do wars, where does wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask to miss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. A lot of times we ask God for the wrong things. And instead of asking for more of Him, we ask for material things. You know, if you, if you seek the Lord and, you, and, and all you ask is of Him, don't you know everything is available through Him? The Word says, First seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all things shall be added unto you. So if you seek him with your words and just seek him, Lord, I love you, I glorify you, Lord, da 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 da, da all the time and speaking in tongues, that's the perfect will of God right there. You can't miss with that one. You could have, yeah, you could have blinders on and throw it backwards and still hit a bull's eye because it's the perfect will of God. Amen? Adulteries and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You got to understand, if the world loves you, then there's something wrong. If the world loves you, there's something wrong. Because the word says that the world is supposed to hate us. Because we're different people. We're peculiar to the world because we don't follow the things that they do. Because we follow things as kingdom. 
principles does. We don't follow the ways as this world does. We don't run the way they do. We don't listen to the music that they listen to. If you start dancing to that, their music, there's something wrong. Because their music brings death in all ways and fashion. What, what we sing in worship brings life. Have you listened to the music today? It's, it's, it's not hidden death no more. It's outspoken death to the place that they speak in death within the, the children's lives. And, it, and they're seeking after death now. It's not like they're just singing about it. They're really playing with death. And they want to see our children and us die in that thing because they're being used by the serpent. Amen? It might sound good to you and, and oh, bring me back to old memories. Yes, it's bringing you back to the old man and state of mind. And next thing you know, you'll be saying it when you're not supposed to be saying it. The next thing you know, you'll be thinking the things that you're not supposed to be thinking because your words have power. And when you what you speak, like I said, what you confess, you possess. So you go ahead and speak those witchcraft words that come from songs that you don't even understand the lyrics of them. Because it spoke, it was written in witchcraft. So they can put a hex and a vex and a spell upon us. So that we can be blinded again. They don't care about the world now. They want to see us to fall. Because they want to see Christianity be wiped away. Because we are the ones that stand in the way for them, for their agenda. Amen? Verse 5. All right, do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? But He gives more grace, therefore He saves God. He says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So that means that if you don't purify your heart, you're always going to be on the fence. And a lot of times when you're on the fence, you're really on the loser side. Because you can't be serving God and the devil at the same time. Either you're going to be on the Lord's side, or you're going to be on the devil's side. And when you have two forces pulling you, it'll pull you apart. I was taught that by a pastor. You have two forces, the light and darkness pulling on you. It will pull you apart because a house cannot have two masters. It can only have one. Amen? Anything you go back on that was freed from you is an abomination towards God. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs 18. So you can't go back. Trust me. Don't go back. Don't go back. I have did my failures, and I found out I can't go back. Those demons are waiting. And they are big. Grr. <laughs> and they want to get back at you because you got to understand something. All those spirits that you're casting out and you're putting them back to dry grounds and everything, they are angry because you cast them out and you hurt them. Now, if you allow them to come back, don't you think they have more vengeance to come back at you? Because what you have done, they want to really kill you. But first, they want to make you suffer, for you made them suffer. Yeah, it's not, you got to understand some Demons are not friends. They are the enemy. Amen? Proverbs 18, 21. Here's a key scripture that we sometimes forget. Death and life are in the power of your ear, of your eyes, of your feet, of your hand, of your thoughts. 
Where's the death and life is in the power of? Right here. And what's this connected to? Right here. What's this connected to? Right here. Words are being spoken to you because your thoughts are not your own. You have to have discernment who's speaking to you so you'll be able to, to have discernment and knowing what to speak. Is it going to bring life or death? Because the enemy is slick. He'll speak something to you and make you say something. And you know, you'll be in an argument and you say, Oh yeah, I will tell you. Who, where'd that oh yeah come from? Something was spoken. Something was spoken. Because it came to a thought. It rendered into your heart. Now it's going to come out. Amen? You got to be careful, guys, in the disciples' house and in the girls' in the girls' house and everybody else in your own house. We all have to be careful within our house that we'll keep our house purified and sanctified and holy for his glory. Amen? Must re First thing, and when it does slip, you must repent quickly. Quickly. So that have access to you. So that the enemy can't hold on to you. Because we are ministers of the Spirit. Everybody in here is a minister of the Spirit. We were trained to be ministers of the Spirit. Amen? To bring life. To bring life. Also to bring death. To sin and the demonic presence. That's what we, we're here to do. There's a battle going on. We're here to speak life and to bring death to the demonic presence and the sin that is dwelling within us and with others. Amen? Everybody okay? Let's go to Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue Keep his soul from trouble. How many of y'all want to keep yourself out of trouble? Well, my mouth gets me in trouble, not all the time, not as much as it used to. But there's sometimes, you know, pride comes in. What protects pride? Anger. Anger comes in. What happens? The mouth. <laughs> and by the time it comes out, it's too late to catch it. <laughs> it's too late. You're trying to catch it stuff, it's too late. Especially when your emotions are flowing. You can't stop it. You let it go too far instead of cutting it off in the beginning. Amen? We must teach our tongues to build up and edify with divine wisdom, divine knowledge, and encouraging words. So that we can speak truth. Amen? And you got to understand something. Just because you speak truth, you got to understand you have to have discernment knowing when to speak truth and when to hold it back. Because sometimes you could speak the truth, and yes, it's truth, and it might be true, but the timing is wrong. And it can bring more damage and then good because God's timing is God's will. Everything has to be in His timing. So if you miss if you go before his timing, you can make it into an error. Amen? Yes. The, ch the tongue. Everybody have one, I hope. Proverbs 22, 17. Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise. And apply your heart to my knowledge. For it is pleasant thing if you keep them within you. Let them all be fixed upon your lips. So that your trust may be in the Lord. I have instructed you today, even you. Have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge. That I may make you know the certainty of the words of truth. I just said this already. But the truth should constantly come out of our mouth. 
if you don't have something to if if there was something to say and it's not God's timing, shut up. Don't say it. God told me to shut up. I heard it in a big loud voice. I was talking something and he said, shut up. And it didn't come from nobody because he said something to me before in that voice. But he, he saved me from something. But at the same time, about two years later, the pastor brought, made a book called Shut Up and Listen. I said, God said that to me. <laughs> I remember. But you know, he reveals himself to you so you can understand that was me. That was me. It wasn't time for you to speak then. I need you to shut up. Getting it. Sometimes I urge you, 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 you in the program, I urge you, less talking and more going after him. Man, y'all need to just, when nobody's looking, take some time in your prayer closet. Don't, don't do it because you have to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Get the heart to the place that you want to find him. Get your heart in the place that you want to seek him, that he can find you. So that when he finds you, you have him wherever you go. Seek after him. That's what you're there for. You're being there to be disciplined. If you don't discipline yourself now, what are you going to do when you leave? When it's time for you to go? You're not going to be able to go after him because you're going to be too lazy to do it because you didn't discipline yourself to do it in the beginning. I'm just, uh, just trying to help you out. Because I tell you all the time, I be, y'all just sitting back, laying, kicking each other. Yeah, it's good to have, have that time. But this is the time that you need to go into your secret place and say, when I was in the program, I used to look around at everybody, seeing everybody doing stuff. I said, this is my time to go to to him by myself. I'll run in there and just get after him. Just go after him. Because that's what I came for. I came to find Jesus. I, I didn't need my family or anything. I already ruined all that. I mean, they didn't need to see the old David. They needed to see a new creation. They needed so, something that was genuine and real. So I had to find a place to make myself new again renewed into him so that it will be not me no more, but they can see another person. That's Jesus. Amen? I'm just telling you, it helps. Let me draw back on this. Truth should constantly come out of our mouth because sin is tangible and it always brings an evil presence. It's a person. So where sin lays at, there's a presence that's there too. And it's waiting. You remember when, when, when uh, God told Cain, he said, look, man, you gave me this offering. I, I can't take this one. It's not good enough. But why don't you just give me another offering? He said, if you don't do this, he says, sin is crouching right over there. It's waiting to pounce on you. He had the opportunity to make the right choice, but he couldn't because of the emotion that was already dwelling within him. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 15. So we have the choice, and we don't make the right choices there's two choices, either light or darkness. And if we make the wrong one, sin is waiting there. That's come I said before. When you make error, repent quickly so sin don't dwell. Let sin not have its house again. Amen? Matthew 15, verse 10. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles 
a man. Then the disciple came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? They, they messed up right there. They got offended at Jesus. How can you get mad at Jesus? Truly, how can you get mad at, at Jesus, the one that's the life, life giver? How can you be mad at the person that gives you breath every day? Make your heart beat every day. Raise the sun up. Let the moon come up. Wake, wake you up in the morning. Let you go to sleep. How many times you have trouble? How many of y'all had hard time to sleep at times in your life? And it's hard to go to sleep. And then you wish you can go to sleep. You got to understand something. He allows us to go to sleep. How many of you, a lot of us, we have so much stuff going on in our mind that we can't have no peace. He's the peace giver. Amen? Verse 13 says, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And the blind leads the blind. Both will fall into a ditch. So you have to be very careful of who you speak to and the words that you speak to them. Because sometimes you have people that can lie to you and you can believe the lie and then they can alter you off the course. You got to be careful who you listen to and who, who teaches you because you got false prophets out there that teaching Scientology, Mormon, um, Seven Day Venice. What else they got? They got all kinds of stuff now. There's, they got new religions just coming up, you know, just, just out, of, out of the blue. It's because some angel came and gave them a revelation. Be careful when people say an angel came and gave me a revelation for a ministry. Because a lot of them started that way. And it was a demon. Amen? Because you got to remember, demons are fallen. Uh, there are fallen angels that are walking on this earth that comes through and out of this domain right here. Because this is the first heaven. They come in and they can come out. It's the word says, be careful who you entertain. Because you might be entertaining what? An angel. Amen? Now, you must have, I already said this, you must use discernment. Of falsehood. You have to use discernment. Discernment is good. If you don't have it, ask for it. It can save your life. Let's go to James 1. You ever go into a place that was eerie and the back of your hair stood up? That was the sermon to get out of there, wasn't it? <laughs> Are you going someplace and say, I just don't feel right in here. I, I, I just don't. And you, now, now, if you don't have the ears to hear the Lord and you still stayed there, something told me I should have left. And now you're locked up or in a bad situation. Because our pride gets in the way. You know, this is a funny thing. Animals, when they see a trap, they don't go into it. But us human beings, we are so prideful. We see a trap. We say, ah, oh, I can get out of that one. I can. Hey, might call, might call Johnny, but I know another way out. Be mindful of those things. Be mindful. Wisdom. Wisdom. James 1.21. Did I say that? We there? James 1.21 says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your what? Souls. But be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only. Come on, everybody 
agree with me. Let's go back to 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you think he is religious and does not what? Bridle, Bridle his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in the troubles and to keep oneself unspotted of the world. Do you think your tongue will get you in the place to be spotted again? Do you think that your tongue can keep you from being ministered to others in the time that need to be? Especially if you're talking out of place, and then when somebody needs help, they look at you because of what you spoke and how you spoke it. It did not edify, but it brought damnation into their ears. You got to be mindful of what you speak. And just because you get mad don't mean that you have to cuss. Just because you get mad, you can, you know, I was taught, when somebody does something to you, bless and forgive. Bless and forgive. Just keep your heart right. Just keep your heart from not getting in the stone. Because it's your responsibility to keep yourself. It is your responsibility. Nobody else can do it for you. I'm sorry, I can't come over there all the time and help you. Our pastor can't come over there and help you. Or your brother can't come over there. You might be at a job. And somebody did something offended to you. And it might be wrong. You still got to bless and forgive. I know it's, it hurts. But once you keep on doing it and see the benefits of it, you'll start catching on. you start catching on. Because now you, you're getting the love of the Father. Amen? And they say it was going to be easy. I tell everybody that coming in this place, I promise you, this will not be easy. I tell everybody that come here, I promise you, this will not be easy. Because if it was easy, anybody could do it. And this place would be full. But this is for those who have been called. That was a voice that was calling you out of the wilderness. And he was separating you from the world. To make you chosen. So that you can raise up a generation that needs help. Families. Children. Elderly. Wherever it needs to be. Wherever he chooses you to be at. You're willing to go. It's not going to be easy. Because some things that you want to do. is not lined up to what he wants you to do. But you have to be willing to trust him. Trust in what? Obey. Amen? Let's go to James. Where we got? James 1? Oh, unstable saying one thing. Oh, yeah. And also, the ones that can't be a doer of the word, they're unstable. They say one thing and do another. That's an unstable soul right there. Because they're tattling the fence. James 1, 12. This is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Do not be deceived. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's 
The world is deceived right now because they can't accept Christ because they, the devil has people in place through pol political parties, through the music, through the news, through movies, television. He have people in place to bring error to the people. We were very blessed to have the guy, God that we have to pull us out of that fire and to have a place that would teach us what is truth and to open our eyes to see what was the error that we were in. Amen? But he had to what? Use words to speak it to us. He had to speak words, and the words that he was speaking was the words from the Father that was speaking to him. Amen? And that's power. That's power. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. One thing about words, you can speak healing, you can break off addiction, you can break off family curses, you can break off idle minds, you can do a lot of things with words. You just have to believe in the right words to speak. The right words can do a lot of things, and the, right, and the, the wrong words can do a lot of harm and damage. You got to understand, sometimes we speak words about things and we don't know that the words that we're speaking are affecting our children. Because, you know, the devil, he's not, he don't care how you do it. He just wants you to obey his voice so that he can do his job. And he's good at his job. So we have to be good on our job and stay close to the Father so that we will allow the words to be manifested of evil but of good. Amen? How many of you want to see your children blessed? Hmm? That means you got to fight for a position. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep the blood on you. How many of y'all pray the blood on your children every day? You understand? You protect them. Speak that. Pray for them. Pray for them. They're valuable. They're the next generation. They might not even see death. I believe that we're going to be gone as before 10 years, way before that. You see the signs of the times now? The world is, is burning. It's burning. And they're putting fuel on it, too. That's coming to fuel so high right now. Because <laughs> the world is burning. Verse 12, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted and ready. Reading of the Old Testament because of the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, but liberty. But we all, with the unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is the Spirit. And grant us the mind of His Spirit. So we're able to have the Spirit of His thoughts. And, and without His thoughts, that means that His thoughts will come into our hearts to speak His words. His words. We must be careful of our words because the enemy wants to bring us back to self, sin, and fear. How many of y'all remember fear? It's not a comfortable place to be at. Your mouth can contaminate your soul. Amen? Let's go with one last scripture, James 5, 
verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. That's one thing we did. We worship. This is a house of worship. Those words are, are powerful when we speak and sing. Even if you don't like certain, certain music and everything, speak the words. Speak the words anyhow. Because the word has the power. The words have the power. The words have the power. Amen? Just because how you feel, just speak it anyhow. So you can get past that feeling. Amen? The words have the power. I lost myself. <laughs> 14, thank you. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayers of faith. You don't think words... Faith will come from your words. How you speak, we'll, we'll know if you have faith or not. Because mm -hmm, because what you speak, you're going to speak either faith and unbelief. If you speak faith, then you believe that God's going to do something. That means you have hope of the things yet to come. Amen. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be what forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly. You know what I like about that, how God explained this? Because Elijah was a, a, a powerful prophet, but he was letting us know that he had a nature just like us. That means he wasn't different than we were. So, you know, we read people in the Bible, we think they're somebody so superior and they, they were so different and everything because they did signs and wonders and everything. No. They were just like us. Just in a different time. Had to deal with the same issues. Had to deal with the same problems. You know, the word says that don't think that it's only you that's in, 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 the, in the problem, but everybody is going through it. Everybody. Past, present, and what? Future. So we all got to go through it. It's what you do with it. With your words. How you think. What's in your heart. How you steer your soul for your mind and your will and your emotions. How you... Nurture your spirit, man. So your spirit, man, will make your house full. And him. And him. Let's go back to 17. Elijah was a man with nat a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. That's what we have. We have the power of words to turn sinners away from their sin. And in God's time, you can't force it on them, but sometimes you have to wait till they're ready to receive it. That case discernment. And when they're ready and their antennas are up and they, they're looking for it, you're in place. Now, you got to understand something. Your words will keep you in place. Now, you're working, speaking foul words and not staying in place. That person might come to you and you're not ready for that person because the enemy have driven you in the wrong place to be able to be of service for the individual. Amen? Father, we come together right now, Lord, and we thank you for your word of truth, Lord. I ask you, Lord, let your word go forth as it was spoken to us, that it will penetrate our hearts and mind and our spirit, Lord, and that, that we be a follower of your word and be a doer of it for your glory. In Jesus' name.